What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'm not sure if I'm on the screen right now. Um, yeah, I'm filling in for him today. I hope you guys are all having a great week. Um, we didn't have Tim on Tuesday or Thursday. Called to see if he was going to be able to be on today. Didn't work out. We're going to resume that uh, on Tuesday and Thursday just because we had some people asking about it. Uh, everyone's doing well. We have the, let's take a look what we got going on here. All right, we got the SPY up trading at 560. 75, about 0.43% right now. This common Friday V-shape uh, rocking right now. Uh, pretty much off the lows of the day. Yeah, the Russell futures kind of flat right now. NQs trading up 0.66%. Man, we got a lot to talk about, at least in uh, tech in a way. Uh, you have the Dow futures sideways right now. And then, of course, the Dow Jones itself just kind of sideways. The gold contract... Still doing pretty strong, kind of off the high that we made, but still up in the 25, uh, 31 area. Obviously, you have the dollar kind of getting a little bounce back, um, which, you know, a lot of times can bring selling pressure um, in the market, uh, both equities and uh, gold as well. But commodities are looking kind of cool right now, kind of in that line with gold. Taking a look at Newmont, um, the thing just looks pretty strong right now. Again, I would say as well, if you're trying to get really into these metals, strongly recommend doing the gold report uh, by Tom O'Brien. Yeah, we're trading at 53.18 in Newmont. Got a lot of Tigers looking at that currently. Still dynamics up about 0.33%. Tesla doing a little bit all right, up about 2.51%. Silver down 2.73%. And then copper off about 0.19% uh, right now. Lucid not doing much. Let's take a look at Rivian on this long-term play. Trading at 1397, kind of an interesting pattern, right? You gap down heavily, you test that again. Now, we did crack below the kind of the low of that high volume trade um, for a few trading sessions, actually. But back up above it right now. Uh, we'll see if we can start moving a little bit. Again, you know, I think a lot of this pop up here uh, with some hype around it. Still interested in this company going into like 2025, end of quarter of this year, into uh, Q1 of 2020. Uh, 25. We were talking a little bit about how they had to stop production uh, for Amazon uh, because they had some kind of uh, issues at the plant. That's been resolved entirely, um, so no longer an issue. Uh, I just like following the stock. I think it's interesting. Um, I don't really have a huge position in it or anything like that. I just think uh, it's kind of neat. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, well, actually, let's do SMCI first, okay? So they had yeah, kind of some bad earnings off even higher today, uh, trading at 434.56, off from 12.29. A lot of weird stuff going on with this stock, right? Obviously, you just saw Dell do extremely well. These guys are going to be really competitors in a major way, right? Um, we'll talk a little bit about Dell uh, later in the show. It, <laughs> So this is some crazy kind of news, right? I am really suspect of these big short firms um, that release papers on different stocks. Obviously, they are totally biased in, in, in this publication. Uh, I'm talking about Hindenburg in particular, right? Obviously, they have a bunch of shorts out on a company, so you always take things with a grain of salt. Um, but these kind of news publications, you know, they move the stock. It's hard to say. So we're looking at Hindenburg. They released something. This is on the 27th. A fresh evidence of accounting manipulation, sibling self-dealing, and sanctions evasion at this AI high flyer. That's the name of the paper that they released. This is regarding super microcomputers. Uh, let's see some of the main points. Okay, so in August 2024, Supermicro signed an unusual 600 million contract to lease space at a California data center, to sublease it to Lambda. CFO glossed over questions about the reason for this arrangement. Uh, Supermicro has claimed its liquid cooling technology will revolutionize the industry and has its uh, competitive edge, but a recent industry conference, Supermicro featured related party, Ablecom's liquid cooling solutions. Anyways, there was just a bunch, I mean, <laughs> things kind of crazy. They have a bunch of bullet points uh, essentially saying uh, that Supermicro is kind of not being uh, super honest with what they're publishing. And then you have this come out, okay? And this is the 28th where Supermicro Computer is delaying uh, the 10K filing for the fiscal year of 2024. 
that in and of itself is just kind of not really, you know, a stock you want to be in when that's kind of happening, right? Um, so some kind of crazy developments on that, especially for a company that was at the heart of that massive AI run-up, okay? And then we can look at Dell, which again, these are these major, and another thing I say before we even move to Dell, but it has to do with Dell, is NVIDIA is SMCI's th th their biggest client, right? But Dell and SMCI doing the same thing. You then have Jensen Huang moving in, really talking about how superior Dell is going to be. Now, they didn't bring up SMCI, but this idea that Dell is the way to go for them. And if I were working for SMCI or if I were, a, you know, bag holder in SC, uh, SMCI, uh, that would make me a little bit nervous. We look at Dell a little bit. They uh, beat estimates of server sales soar 80%. Uh, so the revenue was $25.03 billion versus 24.53. They're trading up 3.62% right now at 114.74 cents. Those earnings per share are 189 adjusted versus 171 expected. Uh, the net income climbed 85% to 841 million or a buck 17 a share. And that was up from 455 million, wow, or 63 cents per share in the year ago period. Revenue increased about 9% from 22.93 billion. For the current quarter, Dell said it expected between $24 billion and $25 billion in revenue. Dell's emerged as a top vendor for servers that can handle artificial intelligence workloads, uh, especially those based around NVIDIA chips, as demand skyrockets from cloud providers. Earlier this year, NVIDIA Jensen Huang called out Dell founder Michael Dell as a person to contact to place order for systems that include the company's new chips. So AI sales are in the company's infrastructure solutions group, which makes up servers and systems for data centers. And again, We've been talking consistently how this is the next, you know, major market, which is really building these servers. In fact, when it, right now, over the past maybe about year and a half, you've been seeing kind of a slowdown in some realms of tech. And I don't mean it like tech developers or anything like that, um, but legitimately a slowdown in hiring for networking guys, uh, for cyber set guys. Uh, you're, you're seeing even with... Um, with Cisco, they're getting rid of something, but the realm that has seen a massive influx of, of you know, on the ground networking guys uh, has been these massive server farms, which is super interesting. And that's probably not gonna slow down anytime soon. Folks, stay right there, we'll be right back.